Hey everybody, this is Taylor Massey from Everything Under the Sun, and today I'm going to be showing you guys the Fracture Tool in Blender. Uh, it is a built-in part of Blender as of Blender 2.58, the current stable release. Um, if you have an older version, you'll have to download the script somewhere off the web. Um, but uh, I'm going to show you guys how to use it and how to make it look pretty nice. Alright, so the first thing you need to do is erase the default cube. It will not work in this simulation. It causes all sorts of problems when using the Fracture Tool, so just get rid of it. Uh, next, go up to File and go to User Preferences. Uh, click on Add on, making sure you're on Add ons, and then go to Object and make sure that Fracture Tools is checked. Once that's checked, I would recommend clicking Save as Default so you won't have to go back here and do this multiple times. Uh, you can click Close on that or Save and Accept if you didn't already have it done. And now we need to add our objects. So uh, let's just add a plane by pressing spacebar and type add plane. Uh, scale it up by pressing S and moving that. And we'll move it up a bit on the Z axis. All right, so we have our ground plane now. Now let's add our cube that's going to be broken. So just type add cube and drag that up. And now that we have our fracture tools um, installed, we can press spacebar and just type fracture in. Uh, the first one will come up with fracture object and uh, here's where you type in your number of shards. I'll do 50 for the purpose of this tutorial and you can change uh, the crack type whether it's spherical or rough or however you want to do that and then once you're done just hit execute. It'll take just a few seconds to render uh, depending on how fast your computer is. Next, uh, press Z to go into wireframe mode and you will have to select all of these objects. Uh, if you select something like this you can just shift and right click twice to get rid of it but make sure you get all of them selected or you can run into problems. Next, um, press spacebar again and type fracture again and up come set up fracture shards. Uh, make sure that, that is checked and then if you go over into Blender game and press P you'll see it falls as a block, hits the ground and then explodes. So um, now there's a lot of things you can do from this point. Uh, lots of people just like that. They just like to see stuff explode. They just like to mess around with the settings and how many shards they can get. And that's all they really do. But there's a lot more you can actually do. Um, while I have all of these selected, I'm going to do the material. Most people do this last, but I like to do it right now, being as I already have all of the objects selected. So there's no point in trying to do it. All right, so uh, if you press Control J, it will make everything into one object, um, in which if you switch to edit mode, you will be able to select individual vertices, or if you click this, you'll be able to select individual faces. Uh, pressing Z to go out of wireframe, you will see all these different faces, which is the exterior of your box. So if you press uh, 1 on the numpad and then 5 to go into orthographic view, uh, you will see all of the side um, in front of uh, faces. So if you press B for box select and box select these, you can use circle tool, but again, as I said earlier, you can run into some issues with, since there's so many vertices here, you can actually not select certain ones for using that. Once you have that, uh, press 3 on your numpad and it'll flip to the side view and press B again to get these two sides. Gotta get the sides. Alright. Pressing C to leave wireframe mode, you can see that we have all of our exterior selected. Zoom in if you see any spots that you think might not be and make sure they all are. Next, uh, go to the materials tab and we'll add two new materials. Um, so this one will make the exterior, we'll just make it a nice orange, turn up the intensity a bit and hit assign. Uh, next, if you press control I, it will flip and grab all the ver uh, faces on the inside of the thing so and then we go down to this material hit new and we will make this one a nice green and hit assign now all of those inside pieces are changed so now we need to re-separate them so um, you press P oh but first you have to my correction uh, press A to deselect everything and then press A to reselect everything in this object and you'll select all the faces then press P and go by loose parts so now once you leave edit mode you will have a ton of individual objects again hooray but now uh, the origin of geometry as you can see as we click around is all the same so we need to recalculate that by selecting all of our objects one more time and pressing control alt shift C and go to origin to geometry. So now they will all rehab their original geometry and if you press P you'll see them fall. 
All right, so um, if we press P and watch it, you'll see the green on the inside, just like I promised. So that's pretty good. Um, so now let's um, let's mix it up a little bit. Uh, let's add a projectile or something. So if you type in spacebar and type fracture, you can add a bomb or a projectile. I'm gonna add a projectile for this, and let's just throw it over here. We'll put it a little lower so it'll hit as it's falling, and press P to see how it looks pretty sweet uh, so once we have what we're trying to get the basic shape of everything that we're trying to figure out uh, make sure you go up to game and go record animation then once you press P it will save all of those actions as keyframes uh, press escape when you're done and then go back to blender render and you will be able to watch everything as it goes uh, if we go to here and render this out you can see how that looks yeah, uh, lots of people like to remove the shadows when using Fracture Tool because it does kind of look kind of weird. Uh, but yeah, that's basically all you guys need to know about the Fracture Tool. That's how to set up uh, interior and exterior material. If you actually have a legitimate material rather than just a color, it can look really, really nice. Uh, again, turning up the number of Fracture Shards also helps. Uh, subserve modifiers, all those type of things can really, really help uh, bring it all to life. Uh, the only tricky part is really adding those two different materials because you have to join everything, add the materials in first, and then resplit everything and fix the geometry. Um, that's basically all there is uh, to this. It's a really awesome tool, and I'm very glad that it got built into Blender 2.5. Oh, if another thing is, if you don't like seeing the projectile ball, uh, we could probably see it here for a second, right there. Um, just scroll down here to the very bottom and uncheck both of these, and then that ball will never be there as it renders or in the preview box. So you can just see the physics of what's happening. Uh, yeah, hope you guys learned something. If you guys have any questions or concerns or suggestions for future videos, just let us know, and uh, I'm sure we can help you out. Uh, thank you guys.